In this video, we provide the solution to question number 17 from the practice final exam for Math 1060, in which case we're asked to find all the square roots of the complex number 1 minus i times the square root of 3. Now, our best bet to, to compute these square roots is to put these this complex number into polar form first. So let's say this complex number is z, then what would be the modulus of z? The modulus would look like the square root of 1 squared plus the square root of 3 squared. So we end up with the square root of 1 plus 3, which is the square root of 4. And so the square root of 4 turns out to be a 2. And so we get the modulus here is going to be 2. The next thing to do is to compute the argument here. So notice that the real part is positive. The imaginary part is negative. So our complex number is going to terminate in the fourth quadrant here. And so then thinking about like a tangent ratio, tangent theta is equal to, we're getting negative root 3 over 1 right here. So negative root 3. This occurs when you have a negative root 3 over 2 over 1 half. So that's going to happen. So when does cosine equal 1 half and sine equals negative root 3 over 2? Of course, this is going to be in the fourth quadrant here. Um, well, sine is equal to root 3 over 2 at 60 degrees in the first quadrant. So we're looking for the angle that references 60 degrees in the fourth quadrant. So we're looking for 300 degrees or, in other words, we're trying to get... Um, theta equals 5 pi over 3. Now, when it comes to the arguments here, when you're taking complex roots, we have to realize that anything coterminal to that would also be acceptable. There is a change of period that happens here, and so this is important to recognize. So z is going to equal, if we put it into its polar form, 2 times e to the i times 5 pi thirds plus 2 pi k. So this is our complex number in polar form. All right, that's the hardest part of the problem. Uh, the next step is then to take the square root. If we take z to the 1 half power, that's what we're going to do here. We're going to get the square root of 2, and then we're going to take e to the i, and we're going to divide this by 2, right? So we get 5 pi thirds plus 2 pi k, and we divide this angle by 2, all right? So root 2 times e to the i, we're going to get 5 pi over 6 plus pi k, and so there's going to be two options here. There's the option where you take k to be 0 and k to be 1, so the square roots of z, you're going to end up with the square root of 2 times e to the i 5 pi 6. And then you have root 2 times e to the i. We're going to add pi to that, so we end up with 11 pi 6, like so. All right? And so now we need to compute these complex numbers using this angle. So we have the square root of 2 times cosine of 5 pi 6 plus i sine of 5 pi 6, that's the first square root. Uh, the second square root will be similar, it's the same modulus, square root of 2, but we're going to get cosine, this case, of 11 pi 6, and i, excuse me, i sine of 11 pi 6, like so. So notice 5 pi 6 and 11 pi 6 both reference uh, pi 6 or 30 degrees in the first quadrant. Now, 5 pi 6 is in the second quadrant, so cosine would be negative in that situation. Cosine of pi 6. Sine would be positive. For the second one, of course, 11 pi 6 is in the fourth quadrant, so cosine would be positive in that situation, for which then you get pi 6. And then the next one, you're actually get negative. Cos uh, sine is negative in the fourth quadrant, so you get negative i sine of pi 6. And that's not too surprising. Whenever you take square roots, uh, whatever the principal square root is, the other square root will be its additive inverse. So notice how the signs are different. Negative, uh, negative versus positive when you compare the two. So now we have to do cosine of pi 6, which would switch be root 3 over 2. Sine of pi 6 is 1 half. And so doing as such, we get the square root of 2 times negative root 3 over 2 plus i over 2. That's the first square root. And then the second square root will be the square root of 2 times, uh, well, same basic numbers. The signs are different, though. 3 over 2 minus i over 2, like so. So we potentially could stop there. Uh, but let's distribute the square root of 2 through on this. And so for the first one, we get negative square root of 6 over 2 plus we're going to get i root 2 over 2. That's the first square root of z. And then the second one's going to be, this, again, just added inverse, the square root of 6 over 2 minus i root 2 over 2. And so this then gives us the two complex square roots of the number 1 minus i square root of 3. 